To join us right now is uh, Amirta Sen, uh, Energy Aspects founder and director of research. Good morning to you. What do you think? I was just at the pump, by the way, and thought, mm, actually, this felt better. But maybe, uh, maybe we're headed the other direction. What do you think? Sorry, you cut off there a little bit. Were you saying pump prices are going down? I was going to say I thought for, for a moment it felt, it felt like it might be getting better, but I said maybe it's getting worse. What do you think? <laughs> uh, I mean, look, right now, uh, it's a shoulder season. We've not really had any heating demand. Diesel demand is weak, particularly in the U.S. Um, so there is some pressure, uh, including on pump prices, even for gasoline. But into the summer, we do expect a uh, lot, lot higher prices, actually, at the pump, especially because to get imports into the U.S., you're going to get it from much further afield. It's not necessarily going to be from Europe because Europe is now losing out on all the Russian material that used to come into Europe that was used to make uh, gasoline. So I think you are going to see stronger pump prices this summer, uh, but not in the short term. And is your sense that crude gets to $100? Is that, is that real? Uh, yeah, second half of the year, again, not now. We have inventories to run down, so that needs to happen first. Uh, but the reopening in China is real. Uh, we are seeing some very, very strong mobility numbers. Jet fuel demand growth is going to be very strong as well. Uh, so, yeah, it is, but it is a matter of time because we do need to run down the built-up inventories first. Is there any, you know, every analyst we've had on recently has sort of called for, for WTI to go materially higher, Brent to go materially higher. Is there any chance it goes lower? I mean, look, I think the or the risk to the $100 oil price forecast absolutely come from, comes from the demand side and what happens uh, to the world economy. Right now, it's a very, very strong East versus West divide. Uh, the East is growing and growing very strongly, uh, but the West is very weak. I mean, the U.S. data mixed, strong labor market, but, you know, weak, uh, weak manufacturing. If that has a bigger impact on the rest of the world uh, and Europe, which has managed to just about stay out of recession, gets weak again, I think then, yes, there is a risk that we don't get to $100. But I will say with, you know, the billions of people who are coming out of a three-year lockdown effectively in China, uh, we are seeing it in the mobility numbers, and that's why we remain confident for the second half of the year. I've got a weird one for you, uh, which is, you know, we've been having a big conversation around this table for the past couple of weeks about uh, ESG, the backlash against ESG, and specifically the way investors are thinking mm -hmm. about investing in, in oil today. Have you seen a shift at all in terms of just the conversations you're having? Yes, I think it's a great question, actually. I think, you know, we've been through this last few years, at least five years, I'd say, very much focused on green and on renewables. Uh, I would say in Europe, that conversation is still very much present, but there's a sense of realism kicking in. Uh, because it's never been about, oh, we shouldn't, uh, you know, lower carbon emissions. It's about, okay, what's the true cost of it and how quickly can we do it? I think those are the two questions uh, that politicians have never really grappled with. But with the energy crisis that we've gone through last year and still right now, prices are very high, both for gas and oil, despite the gas price correction compared to historical levels, right? I think there is a sense of realism creeping in that demand is growing. It's not slowing down. Therefore, we need the energy supplies as well.